It's okay, Jeff. Come on, let's go this way. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Jeff. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Jeff. Come on. Come on. Can you sit? Sit for me. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good morning. We have a confluence of amazing events today. This is Pastor Jack, and Pastor Jack has his, oh, no, no, mommy, mommy's over here. Hey, Jack, mommy's over here. Look, over here. No, no, you think she's back there, but she's not. Okay, I'll, be, I'll talk over your whining. Anyway, Pastor Jack has on his uh, stole and chargeable and his collar. Sip, sip, good boy. Because today we celebrate St. Francis of Assisi. And at 4 o'clock this afternoon in the plaza in front of the church, we will bless the animals. So if you have an animal you would like to have blessed, uh, bring it at 4 o'clock and we will do that. And Jack will be there to assist. So uh, just FYI. And isn't Jack adorable? All right. You ready to go, Mama? Go on. Go on, Jack. Mama. Let's see Mama. Go see her. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to worship, everybody. Welcome to St. Michael's, where you never know what will happen next. Just FYI. We also have a wonderful baptism today of Harper Bostic, and uh, we have a, many, many pews of family here, and we're excited that everybody is here with us, and we welcome you. Uh, in Christ's name, and we just are so excited about this day, and we've got it all set up and ready to go. So we will do the baptism after the hymn of the day, and you won't need to pull up a hymnal because you will have um, everything in the bulletin that you need. You also have parts, so pay attention because you'll have things in bold that you need to do, okay? And I don't want to hear any mumbling. I want to hear nice, clear Christian voices welcoming Harper into Christ's family. Um, we have a couple of we have a couple of visitors I want to point out. Or not visitors, but folks who are not normally with us uh, today. First of all, Liam. Stand up, Liam. Liam is uh, in his first year at the Citadel, and we can tell by the haircut. <laughs> Affectionately called a knob, because there's nothing to hold on to except the head. Anyway, welcome home, uh, Liam. We're so excited you're here with us. And uh, also just a shout out to, to Michael, his dad, who is the public works uh, person for Richland County. So if you can imagine roads and public works in Richland County, what Michael has been through in the last week since Hurricane Hel Hel Helene, God bless you, Michael. We thank you for your service uh, to the community and uh, I know you've done a great job. So thank you so much. Hey. hey. And we have the Krolls. The Krolls are back. Stand up for us and say hi. All the way from Margaritaville in Daytona Beach, Florida. So they had a 50th anniversary celebration and uh, decided to surprise us and come up for the day. So God bless you. Good to see you. We love you. All right. Whew. There's a lot going on today. All right, announcements, 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 announcements. Remember that? That's from uh, some movie. I forget what it was. All right, today we have the baptism of Harper. We've got uh, um, blessing of the animals at four. We also have an effort to help the folks up in the mountain area of North Carolina, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Karen, Karen, would you stand up? Karen Ward. Karen has a connection up in the mountains that is collecting warm clothes because uh, winter is coming. If you have warm clothes that you would like to donate to the relief effort, she, also, she already has uh, somebody to distribute them and a place where they'll be taken. I mean, this is not like a random Karen wants to do something by herself. It is uh, a, an organized effort uh, through an organization in Maggie Valley. And so if you have warm clothes of any size that you would like to donate, have them here by 4 o'clock, or you can bring them to the office tomorrow if you want to. Um, or text Karen and she'll come get them. So, uh, yep, thank you so much for doing that, Karen. There's just efforts everywhere to try and uh, mitigate some of the problems that they've had up in the mountains. Right, okay, sleeping bags, warm clothes, coats, 
um, you know, scarves, hats, gloves, anything like that. So we'll, we'll take them up and they'll be distributed uh, up in the mountains. Uh, six o'clock Tuesday, we have a council meeting, and so we we'll want to make sure all the council members know that. We we'll want the congregation to know as well, so that you know that if there's any concerns you have or thing you want to take to council, then that would be where you would do that, and then we would discuss it there. Ten o'clock Monday, uh, ten, ten o'clock Wednesday morning is Bible study. We're doing, uh, we're not doing the Ecclesiastes anymore, thank goodness. We're doing pastoral epistles, so uh, uh, note that uh, we're having a lot of fun with that as well. A lot to discuss. And then, of course, we have our regular events uh, in the calendar as well. We have an event coming up on October 30th. It will be a, we help the uh, Merchants Association at Craft and Draft uh, at, the, at the shopping center there to uh, distribute candy and to, we dress up, you know, we do different things. And so just note from five to seven on Wednesday, October 30th, we're gonna be doing that. All right. That is all I have. We do have one bit of business that we need to do. I need everybody to turn to 486 in the, bull, in, the, in the red book, 486. We are monthly changing up a couple of little songs that we're doing. And so this, is, this will be a new song to us, but it should be fairly familiar or is this the uh, is this the one that has the beat, the beat to it? Okay. All right. I think in the month of October we'll be able to handle that pretty well. And uh, we are serving sangria with communion. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> just because we're doing a little Spanish song doesn't mean we're going crazy. But it just occurred to me as we were singing it, I said, wow, it makes, puts in the mood for a margarita or a sangria or something. <laughs> All right. Well, the floor show is about over. Um, newsletters have gone out. A um, lot of good information. Uh, there are some people who get them by mail. There's a basket, but I think we've gotten everybody. Uh, check your email to make sure that you have that, and uh, we are ready to rock and roll here. We will do the baptism after the hymn of the day, and so we're looking forward to that. Welcome to St. Michael's. We're glad you're here. God bless you.
I invite you to stand as you are able for the gathering hymn.
I was reminded as we sang that very last line of the last verse, let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome. You may not know it, but this is the third building on this site. And uh, the first building was called the Blue Church. The second church was built and had a blue ceiling. And then this church was built in 21. And somebody reminded me this week, Siamic actually, about being in the rafters of this building up above the ceiling. There are blue boards that they recycled from the previous church. Um, and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated. Our first reading is from Genesis. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> reading from Hebrews. <clears throat> Long ago, ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purif purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, are mortals, 
that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and he be joined to his wife, uh, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked Jesus again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, there's a lot to sweat about in these lessons today, isn't there? Lots of harsh words, lots of commandments being sort of bantered about, about marriage and about children and about uh, creation and, and God's relationship to everything, and then how Jesus sort of factors into it all. It's enough to make our heads spin a little bit. To realize that, that, that there is such diversity in scripture of things that are said about so many things that we live through. There are a couple of key things I want you to focus on today as we look at the lessons that were read and look at our own lives reflected and also sort of where God fits into that. Where does Jesus fit into that? 
The first thing we need to recognize above all other things is that God created us to be in relationship to God and also to be in relationship with each other and also to be in relationship with creation. If you read carefully the passage from Genesis about how the world was created, God didn't just zap it. God didn't sort of snap his finger and then walk away. God joins in partnership with humanity, in partnership with Adam, to create a companion for Adam. He saw that he was by himself in the garden, and whether you believe in the actual Garden of Eden or you believe it's a myth or a metaphor, the story is still the same. The point is still the same. God created all of creation in order to provide a place and a companion and maybe even a job for this human that he had created. Now, God seemed to be satisfied with Adam, but Adam didn't seem to be satisfied with just being God's friend. Kind of a hard thing to live up to, you know? So we see that God locates Adam in his loneliness, surrounded by all of these animals that Adam has named, which means he has some investment in them, and God sees that something is missing. And that something is human companionship. And so we see the, the, the creation of Eve as a partner for Adam. Who is all, they also are partners with God. And so here we begin to piece together sort of this relationship between us between us and God, and between us, God, and creation. There is a mutual dependency that happens. We are not alone, is the basic idea. So history moves on. God develops this relationship with his people. He gives them a land. He gives them a king. He gives them a place. But we all know that there's something at work in the world that is at the same time that God is creating, this work in the world is destroying. By conflict, by war, by hurt words and hurt actions, by thinking of ourselves in a hierarchy, some people closer to God and some people farther away than God. This idea that sin invades God's good creation. We always see when Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees that Jesus is making a new rule. Not a rule that divides, but a rule that unites. It may not seem like it in our passage today, but there is good news in, in these passages, particularly some of the more harsh passages. Jesus never intended for human beings to club each other over the head over the words of Jesus or the words of God. The commandments are pretty comprehensive. Even though there are more than ten, but the ten, even in them of themselves, are pretty comprehensive. But those commandments are not meant for us to beat each other over the head with, but they are meant to be a light for us to move towards a way to order our lives in such a way that we are beneficial to God, to each other, and to creation. See where I'm going with this, guys? 
there is this sense that we are in it together. And God is in it with us. And so whenever we see the Pharisees confronting Jesus, you know that they are always coming at Jesus with harsh commandments. They're looking for rules to follow. They're looking for ways to look at others and point the finger. They're looking at ways to make God less accessible, not more accessible. All the rules about food and washing hands and where you stand and how you pray, all of those things became an obsession for the Pharisees. And so they come to Jesus to trick him. They want him to say something that doesn't jive with the commandments. They want him to say something that they can then look at everybody else and go, see, he's no big deal. But Jesus always turns it around. Now it may seem as we read this gospel reading that the Pharisees agree that a man can divorce his wife. All he has to do is write a certificate and kick her out on the street. That's all there is. And so they asked Jesus, do you contradict this? Is this the way it should happen? But Jesus has a higher understanding of relationships. Jesus looks at relationships differently than those Pharisees do. You see, for those Pharisees, it probably was closer to a financial arrangement, marriage, than it was to anything else. Often families would take a man and take a woman and put them together and they'd never met each other and they were married. That does not preclude a relationship. Now yes, relationships can build from that and love can bloom from arranged marriages. There's no question about that. I think through our history we've seen that happen. But when it comes to that commandment that the Pharisees are trying to trick Jesus into contradicting, has within it law. And it appears as if when Jesus talks about divorce, that he is kind of doubling down on those laws, making them harsher. But Jesus never does anything in isolation. He basically tells the Pharisees what they want to hear. And it seems very harsh. But Jesus isn't looking at marriage as a commandment. Jesus is looking at marriage as a relationship. Like the relationship between God and humans like the relationship between humans and creation. And Jesus knows that there is imperfection in those relationships and in the world. And he is there to teach a whole new way. And so while Jesus appears to buckle down or, 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 or double down on divorce and make it even harsher than the Pharisees, the fact that Jesus follows up those sayings with a completely radical and different way of looking at relationships. After his con conflict with the Pharisees, he goes into somebody's home and he's there resting. He's with his circle of disciples. They're talking about things. And they're kind of like, we don't understand all this. What are you doing? And all of a sudden the door knocks and out the door you see a line of people with their small children. And they're bringing them to Jesus. But the disciples are like, get out of here. Jesus is too important. Jesus is too busy. But Jesus says, let the children come to me. Now I know from my Facebook feed how much this family adores Harper. Pretty evident. In the days of Jesus, 
children were seen as a burden. They were an extra responsibility. They were unproductive. They didn't offer anything to the household. The mortality rate was enormous. And so the idea that you would become so attached and then if something happened, be heartbroken. And we have the blessing and the opportunity to look at that differently. But we can't look at it differently in terms of this scripture passage. Because as Jesus talks about human relationships and as he talks about marriage being a man and a woman coming together and becoming one, he then turns it around for the people that are listening and, and says, and by the way, these children that you think are so unimportant, who you worry about and who you think are, are, are not really understanding of what God is doing, they actually have it right. Have you ever seen how children show their relationships on the playground? Have you ever seen how they light up when they see a total stranger in the grocery store that maybe has a sparkly earring or a red sweater or holding something that they really want to look at? I see children all the time because of my white beard. <laughs> look at me, especially around the holidays. And they point, you know. Ho, ho. What Jesus is actually getting at in this gospel reading relates back to the creation story in Genesis and relates back to our second reading that talks about living in community. And Jesus wants our relationships to be life-giving. He wants our relationships to, to benefit the world and those around us. And he surprises the disciples by making it not about what the Pharisees were talking about, but about what God is doing in the world. How is God in relationship with us? How is God in relationship with you? How are you in relationship to creation? We've had a challenging week because creation certainly dealt a blow to the mountain communities here in the southeast. But we are seeing the creative community of humanity coming together on so many different levels to try to erase, and it will take decades if not years, trying to erase that which was destructive and replace it with something creative. It could very well be that in 25 or 30 years, those very same communities that have been leveled will be thriving places of humanity, better than they ever were. We are part of a system of relationships. Us to God, God to us. Us to each other, and us to creation. It's not always perfect and there's evil at work in the world. But God does not want us to build walls between each other. God wants us to live in harmony and to live in grace. And in that way, Jesus turns all that stuff that the Pharisees are talking about up on its head and says, let the little children come to me. Let those with a childlike faith come to me. You've seen and heard the invitation. And now we extend that invitation to those around us. Amen.
You know about dad jokes, right? I was walking in seminary when I was 25 years old, and I was walking by the quad, and this elderly pastor is walking down the sidewalk, and uh, I sneezed. And uh, he looked at me, and he gave me a wink and a dad point. He goes, God bless you, and that's official. <laughs> so God bless you, and that's official. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God. To live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Harper may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Harper grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please say, we do. We do. People of God, do you promise to support Harper and this young family and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please say, we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated for the baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. Blessed be God, now and forever. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death, and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that those who are baptized here may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Here we go. Harper Eloise is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Harper with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Harper, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Give Dad something to do. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Take her for a little walk here. Hey there. Here we go. Welcome the newest little part of God's kingdom. Harper, look at all those faces that love you so much. We don't get to do this often, so I'm going to really mooch it up here. <laughs> this child of God is our responsibility. This child of God has been given to us and to this community to teach, to love, and to care for. And so we take that responsibility seriously. And we know that she will grow in grace and beauty, grow in faith, and grow in understanding of God's role in her life. Remember that we are in relationship with God. We are in relationship with each other, both families and congregations and communities. And we are also in relationship with creation. Harper will enjoy God's good creation. And we know that she will appreciate it and praise God for it. So everybody get a good look. <laughs> Here we go. Good job. good job, absolutely. And here is her certificate. And you can blow that out. And we'll meet after church and do some other things. Wonderful, thank you. Hey, Harper, you smiling at me. She likes me. She likes me. Uh, you can take here. I invite you to stand if you're able. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. God of grace, creator of every creature on earth, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of cattle, birds of the air, animals of the field, and those who share our homes. Reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. God of grace. Sovereign God, we give thanks that you are mindful and benevolent to even us, mere mortals. Accompany us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations. Endow leaders with minds for justice and hearts for compassion. God of grace. Restoring Lord. Grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering. We remember today especially those from our prayer list. Dot, Bob, Don, Gwen, Rose, Miriam, Tommy, Joanne, Alice, Mickey, Terry, Caroline, Bob, Paul, Judy, Grady, and Melinda. 
We offer a prayer for those in our community who are serving our country. We pray today for Tyler, Samantha, Zachary, Grant, Colin, Griffin, and Hunter. Work through medical professionals to diagnose, ease pain, and give life to all who seek their wisdom and experience. God of grace, unifying God, humans were created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace. We offer a prayer for Harper and her family. Matthew and Kinsey, we just thank you so much for the love and the care that this large and extended family has brought to her and to her family. We know that there are times of sadness as we think about great grandma Joyce. But we know that in the communion of saints, she is still with us and still caring for her family. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, you prepare a place in the kingdom through Christ's death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet, especially Joyce Bowers. God of grace, into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I did want to extend an invitation to everyone who's here with us today to partake of Holy Communion. We believe that anyone who believes that Jesus died for their sins is welcome to the table at St. Michael. We have bread that you receive from the pastor, and then there's a tray that has grape juice in the center, white or, or yellow, and then wine around the edges. You take your empty glasses and deposit them in the trash cans on either side. Remember that it is Christ's table, not our table. Please stand for the offering hymn. Feast of life is free. 
Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, in the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song, the earth is full of your glory. O oh God triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus our healer. In Christ you bring life from death, we remember his cross, we laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with love for all the earth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this table, we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O God, triune, you create the worlds. You uphold the living. You embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our deaths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God.
I invite you to stand if you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with the dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen.